Hello, and welcome to the lesson on similarity, finding side links. Let's do some examples. So the following pictures that you can see here, they're all examples of similar figures. So special word, in maths you might not have heard of before, called similar. What does it mean for two shapes to be similar? Let's see. So they're having a little investigation. What do we notice about here? Hmm. They kind of look like the same shape. What's different about them? Mm, could be something. This triangle. How does it look compared to this triangle? Similar triangle, but just a different something. This butterfly and this butterfly are, are very similar. It's just something they don't. That they're slightly different between them. This triangle, same as this triangle, except there's something slightly different between them. And you've probably realised what it is that's different between them. It's their sides. Um, so based on these examples. We can say that two figures are similar <laughs> if one is an something of the other, regardless of something. So you probably guess what I mean going on about here. So based on these examples, we can say that two figures are similar if one is an enlargement. <laughs> if one is an enlargement of the other, regardless of regardless of orientation. So which way? It could be spun around, for example. Let's like see this one and this one. This one's kind of been flipped, but they're the same triangle. They just moved around in space and shrunk. Um, their corresponding sides must be in proportion. They kind of have a similar scale between them, a similar scale factor between all the sides. And their corresponding angles must be the same size. So that's interesting. They must have the same size angles. But their side lengths are not the same, but they're all in proportion. Um, so if their angles are all the same size, they are equiangular. That's a new word if you haven't heard it before. That's a cool new word. So if all angles are the same in the shape, they are called equiangular. Equiangular. We've learned of the word equidistant. Now we've heard of the word equiangular starting times. So discuss whether the following pairs of figures are similar. So this is kind of interesting. Let's see. So some of them look kind of similar, but they're not all similar for various reasons. So what would you say about the first one? So the angles all look to be the same size. Yes, they do. Um, the sides all seem to be in proportion, like one didn't shrink in more than the other. So we'll say that these two, uh, yes, they're similar triangles. What about the kites? going on with these kites. What do you notice about the angles? Did you notice that this angle here is not the same as this angle here? The green angle is shrunk in a bit um, because the length, the, side, the bottom two lengths kind of widened out a bit. So this one is a no. Um, the next two, let's see, they look kind of similar, but the only thing is this length is the same as this length. But the other lengths, the long lengths, are not the same as each other. Um, so they're not in proportion. Their angles are very similar, but their lengths are not in proportion. You can write that as well if you want. Two circles, they're both circles, so yes, similar shapes, definitely similar scale factors. Um, this one you might initially think is a no, but if you kind of see this little baby one, if you spun it around, it would be, you would notice that it was similar to the other one. So it doesn't matter, matter about the orientation, it doesn't matter if one's been flipped and the other one hasn't. So long as they've got the same size angles and their lengths are all in proportion. And then like this length here is in proportion to this length here. Um, now, first of all, looking at this next one for S, you might think, yes, they're similar. But how many sides are in the first shape? Six sides, so what is it? Six bar, hexagon. How many sides in the next shape? One, two, three, four, five. So there's eight. Eight sides is a completely different shape. And octagon. So if they're different shapes, then they're totally an interesting question. Are congruent figures similar? I don't know if you remember a song from Year 7. Congruent shapes are the same shape and size. Congruent shapes are the same shape and size. Um, 
but similar shapes. The uh, the same shape, but they're not the same size. So this is a very interesting question. So on one hand, a congruent figure similar. On one hand, you could argue yes. Because they are the same shape. Shape and their sides are in proportion. they have exactly the same size. So technically you could say their size is still in proportion, but on the other hand, it depends on your definition. <laughs> um, okay. So on the other hand, you could argue that they're not the same. similar shapes, congruent shapes are also similar because they are the same shape and their sides are in proportion. On the other hand, um, if you look at a different source, a different textbook, it would argue the opposite. So on the other, <laughs> on the other hand, you could argue you could argue no. Remember the question was are congruent figures similar? On the other hand you could argue no as some textbooks including our own depends on what source you're looking at, what textbook. So on one hand, some could say that yes, congruent shapes are also similar because they are the same shape and their sides are in proportion, they're equally angular. On the other hand, you could argue that there's no, as in some textbooks say that for similar shapes, one shape must be the enlargement of another. Um, congruent shapes must be the exact same shape and size. Sorry. style description. Let's just move on to the basic maths. You won't be asked a congruent shape similar um, in your tests or exams or anything, so don't worry about that. You might be asked, are they, is this thing a congruent shape? Are they, is the shape similar? Is this figure similar? But you won't be asked that philosophical question that we just discussed there. Okay, so when we talk about similar shapes, we can refer to the scale factor. Okay. <laughs> So when we talk about similar shapes, we can refer to the scale factor K as being this little formula here. Let's put it in a lovely little box. So important. So you calculate a scale factor. It's the length of a side on a new shape divided by the length of its corresponding side on the original shape. So notice I've done the original one in red, like how I did these transformations. I do the object, the original thing in red, and the new thing, the image, I would do in purple. So for example, I'm using the same shading kind of code here. So length of the side on a new shape divided by the length of its corresponding side on the original shape. Um, when we're asked to find a missing length, we must first find the scale factor. Well, you don't, to be honest, you don't always have to find the scale factor K, but I'm going to find the scale factor on the first one, just in case you were ever asked 
to calculate the scale factor. So I'm going to show you the first few examples by calculating the scale factor first. So the triangle AD, A dash, B dash, C dash is similar to triangle ABC. Similar to triangle ABC. I might just pause and calibrate the board again. Okay, we're back from the calibration. But didn't do much anyway. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle A sorry, triangle A dash B dash C dash is similar to triangle ABC. Um, okay, so which one is the original one? This is the original one here. Which one is the new one? The A dash B dash C dash one. Huh? Okay. Hopefully we're not going to be bothered too much by that anymore. So here is the... Ugh, because I keep trying to open new things. Change the colour. Okay, and this one is the new one, which I was trying to do in purple. Yeah. Okay. I'm really having a lot of grief with boards these days. So new, I have to be right there with purple. Here's the new, just to show you what I mean by the color coding. Color coding. Lovely. New. Go. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example, but you finding the scale factor first. So let's do that. Finding the scale factor first. have to solve this by finding the scale factor first, but just in case you're ever asked to find the scale factor, I'm going to show you an example of doing that. Uh, okay, no. So remember K is the length of the new, purple board, so length it up, divide by the length on the original, the corresponding length on the original. So you can see these triangles are similar, they've got the same orientation which makes life a bit easier. So A corresponds to 5. What else corresponds? X corresponds to 4. So I'm going to color code it like that. Um, so new divided by the original. <laughs> really doesn't work with purple anymore. Four. Okay, so there you go. Beautiful. Okay, so those two correspond. New. Okay, so new divided by. Which equals, in this case, we've got equals uh, the new is 5 and 8. So that's our scale factor. K is 5 over 8. Brilliant. Let's move on from there. What we now need to do is we need to find out what x is. So we've got a lovely little scale factor going on. And it makes sense. The scale factor makes sense. 5, 8 is a weird scale factor, but it does make sense. 5, 8 is a number between 0 and 1. If the scale factor is a number between 0 and 1, it makes the shape shrink. If the scale factor was a number greater than 1, it would make, make the number enlarge, it become bigger. So ours shrunk, going from the original to the new shape, it shrunk. So that's why a scale factor is a number between 0 and 1. It's still always interesting to point out. You feel free to write that down if you want to. Um, so now let's find the missing length. Now find the missing One way you can think of it is x, the blue x, multiplied by k. New x multiplied by k must equal 4. So therefore x must be equal to 4 divided by k, um, which is equal to 4 divided by k is 5 x. times 8 over 5, it's like 4 over 1 times 8 over 5 gives you 32 over 5. So I've got a weird answer, that's fine. 32 over 5 meters, 
for the decimal, that would be 6.4. There's our two answers. So we've just found what... Sorry, can't tell the word must be the text. So... Let's move on to the next lovely little example. Example 5x, given that triangle A dash B dash C dash is similar to triangle ABC. So ABC is our original. Do I dare try this? I'll stop myself. That's a punishment. Oh, well. Original. <laughs> okay. And let's just say, if I just put all this up even more. Okay, so I'm going to do this version by finding the scale factor first, because I just like to show you a few examples where I found the scale factor um, first. So let's see, the, these two triangles are similar, they have the same orientation. So we can say 10 and 20 correspond with each other, and x and 16 are corresponding sides. They're not equal, they're just corresponding, they're in proportion. Um, so let's find our scale factor using the green numbers, because we know what those two are. So scale factor, you do so the new value 20 over the original value, which was 10. So our scale factor is 2, which makes sense because if the number is greater than 1, it gets bigger. The scale, if the scale factor is greater than 1, then the size of the shape will increase. Uh, okay, cool. So now let's find the length. So x multiplied by k must equal 16. So we're using the red sign. So x multiplied by k must equal 16. So x must equal 16 over k, so k has to be 2, that's going to be x equals 8. And don't forget your units, you've got to put them up here, units, that's not that good. But I tend to get my units in the your questions. Um, so please just make yourself do that. So 8 centimetres is the missing side, which makes sense. 20 divided by 2 gives you the 10. Looking at the red side, 16 divided by 2 gives you the 8. So you could probably look at that and work it out intuitively, but imagine they wanted you to calculate the scale factor, or the question was show that the scale factor is 2. You would have to do lots of working out like that in green above. Okay, so sometimes you might be asked to do something like this to establish that a pair of triangles are similar. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was me going in a straight line, can you believe it? Okay, so to establish that a pair of triangles are similar, we must prove that two pairs of corresponding angles are equal. Remember, like, similar shapes must be equiangular. So because triangles, they only have three angles. So if you can just prove that two of their um, angles are the same, then the, the, the two of their pairs of corresponding angles are the same, then that proves that the other pair are equal as well, because all three angles in the triangle add up to 180. So as there are three angles in a triangle, this would mean that the third pair of corresponding angles are equal. So to do a proof, if you're asked to prove that two triangles are similar, using their angles, just proving that they have two angles, um, pairs of corresponding angles in common, is all that it would require. So let's set this little question up. There you go. In the figure alongside, B, B equals 20. Notice that they didn't mark that on there. So that's something we might want to draw on. Establish that a pair of triangles is similar and hence find a K. So remember to first of all prove that they're similar, we have to say that they have two angles the same. You might be able to just look at that and realise it. I think it's awesome to um, draw them out first. So let's say to establish similarity, establish <laughs> similarity, prove um, two pairs of corresponding angles are equal, like what it says above, and then automatically the third pair must be equal as well. Angles are equal. So I really, really strongly suggest drawing out the triangles. So draw out the two triangles. You've got your big triangle, here's your big triangle. And then you've got your little baby triangle off to the side. So, because otherwise... Oh, my dear, can you that one? So, otherwise... If you didn't 
do that. Okay, so if you didn't do that, then um, you might by accident think that this shape is similar to this shape, but they're not. They're different, completely different shapes. They're not similar at all. One's a quadrilateral, one's a triangle. So drawing out the two triangles is a really, 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 really good idea. Please do that. Um, let's label our little triangle with um, its angles. So we know this one's angle A, this one's angle B, this one's angle D. In the little baby one, we know that this one's angle E, this one's C, and this one's D. Wicked. Uh, what we also know is we have to know some side length. We know that this one's 12. Uh, we're told up here that BD is 20. So we should put that one on here. 20. BD is 20. We're also told um, little extra things over here. So we're told that ED is x plus 2, and we're told that EC is x. So we've labeled our triangles with everything that we've kind of been told. Uh, so now let's try to point out how their angles are the same, how they have two angles the same. One angle they definitely have in common, they have angle D in common. Angle D in common. So that's something they definitely have in common. They also have, notice that they've marked a little alpha. It's marking the alpha as well. Um, so the alpha green, green. So the alpha on the big triangle is down at B. So that means that angle there happens to be the same as the little angle up here, alpha there. So the green and the yellow match up like that. So notice that the two triangles I've drawn don't have the same orientation. The second one's kind of been flipped around. So if I, but if I did spin it around, they could have the same orientation. It's fun. They don't have to have the same orientation to be similar. Um, cool. Okay, so we've just, oh no, we're almost done. So I just need to point out, first of all, why they're similar. So we need to just make a point of that. So we could say angles, um, alpha one, angle alpha, and D, are common to both triangles. So this is just establishing similarity. So we've proven that two angles are common to both of them. So therefore, triangles are equidistant. Two triangles are equidistant. So what we've done here is just the first part, which was establish similarity. So I'm just going to cut that part off to point out that that's just the first part component of the question. The second one is just find x. Um, so you could try to work out a scale factor, but that's just awkward here if you don't have x in your scale factor. So I'm not going to use the scale factor method here. I'm just going to use things being in proportion. Okay, so we can say that, let's see, which two sides are in proportion? So the sides that are in between the two angles, alpha and the yellow angle, are 20, alpha in the yellow angle, x plus 2. So 20 corresponds to x plus 2. Because notice that alpha and the yellow angle, this is the length that connects them. Um, and the other one happens to be the one between like 12, basically. So this one with the color gray and black. So 12, which side does that one correspond with? Um, does it correspond with the x? Yes, it does. It corresponds with the alpha connected to the other angle. So alpha on the other baby triangle connected to the other angle C is X. So we can kind of set up little relationships. We can say purple over purple equals black over black. So we can say X plus 2, X plus 2 over its corresponding side, which is 20, is to equal x over its corresponding side of 12. And then what we can do, remember back to algebra, we can cross multiply the result of x. So cross multiply, solve x. Just for a bit, so I don't have a messed up board, so it's too much longer. Cross multiply and solve for x, because in this part we're just asked to solve for x. 
plus multiply. Okay, so x plus 2 times 12 is 12 brackets. x plus 2. 20 times x is 20x. And we can expand. What can we expand? We can expand there. So we will get 12x plus 24 is 20x. We could do now 24 equals 20x minus 12x, which is 8x. So x equals 24 over 3. So x equals 8. Oops, what have I done wrong there? What did I say? I was thinking my answer, sorry. 24 over 3, so it's 24 over 8 because of 8. Sorry, I was thinking of my answer. x equals 24 over 8, so x equals 3. What are our units? We've got to look back at the question. Let's look back at the question to see what our units are so we don't forget them. Centimeters. Let's make sure to write that in. X equals 3 cm. What are we going to spell? Um, okay, so that was an interesting one with a bit of algebra. Let's do some more. Another one with a bit of x going on and a triangle inside a triangle. Uh, what do I always suggest you do for these ones? I suggest you draw out the two triangles. Draw them out as two separate triangles. So much better. Otherwise, people make mistakes otherwise. They think it's a triangle and a trapezoid. But there's no way, because as in like they think this shape is similar to this shape. But there's no way known, they're not even the same shape, so they can't be similar. They have to both be triangles with the same angles and their side lengths must be in proportion. So I'm going to draw the big triangle first, which I've chosen to do, and the baby triangle second. I just happen to do it in that way. Now let's draw the angles A, B, E on the big triangle. In the baby triangle, we've got A, B, and C. It's also we've got parallel lines. We have parallel lines up here, so maybe I might get rid of that. Parallel lines. Um, this might come to have some significance. Let's label anything we know on these diagrams. So we know this little side on the baby one is x. We also know this one is 3. We know the bottom of the big one is 5. What's the side length on the big one? It's not 3, it's not 1. It's the whole length there. It's 4. So be careful of things like that. This one, of course, is going to be longer than the other one. So it's 4. 3 plus 1. So we've labelled it. We're asked to establish that they are similar. So let's see, what angles do they have in common? Let's see, they have A in common. X is the same angle. We just need to establish that one more is the same. Now, thinking back to things called uh, corresponding angles, parallel lines. Uh, I use a laptop. Corresponding angles. Here we go. So, see, so you've got your parallel lines here, and here's a transversal. Remember things like fangles. So, angle C is the same angle as E. Corresponding angles makes an F. Be like that kind of thing, a angle or an upside down F. You could look at it like that. Um, by the same logic, it just happens to turn out these two, B and D, are equal because they're corresponding. So we have to write this out though. So let's write it out nicely because we're asked to establish that they're similar, so we have to do this formally. Um, so they're both. in common one thing also the angles D and E are corresponding they're, they're equal in size Which we, it's, this is all due to the parallel lines um, they're corresponding angles equal to prove that the triangles are equiangular. Uh, okay, so 
You might also want to write this on the paper because I'm like, I'm running out of space here because I'm writing here. So I'll move on from this. Now, because we've got to find x. So what side uh, corresponds? x corresponds with this because they, these two triangles have the same orientation. Side here corresponds with that side here. So blue over blue equals black over black. So x over 5 equals black over black, 3 over 4. And then we can cross multiply and solve for x. So notice I'm not bothering to find the scale factor this time because I'm not. So this is an example of where you, um, like the working out I'm showing is not showing the working out the scale factor first. I could have done that, but I'm just showing you that you don't always have to. And let the question ask you to, in which case of course you have to. Um, so cross multiply will give us 4x equals 15. So x equals 15 over 4. What are our units? Have a look at the picture above centimetres. Um, you might also write it as a decimal. 3.75 cm. 15 over 4 is 3.75 cm. And that question's done. So all that's left to do is find x after we've established similarity. This next question is the same set of instructions. Establish similarity and solve for x. That's one where we're going to have a bit of algebra again. Now you haven't seen one of these kind of styles before. Notice we've got parallel lines again. Parallel lines going on here. We've got that, that arrow there and that arrow there. So this one here and this one here. Increase that. But it's already drawn on yours anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, when you kind of have this bow tie set up, it's a little bit different um, in the way it kind of like they correspond with each other. What happens is this little angle here. Oh, I don't know how to cut the picture messed up. So this little angle here, angle T, it's kind of more like opposites. That angle there is the same as this angle here, angle Q. That's what happens when you get this bow tie kind of set up. And this angle P here, in a similar way, which one do you think it's therefore equal to? That's right, it's equal to that one. That's what happens when you get bow ties. And of course these two are equal because they're just vertically opposite. Via them. So this little angle here equals that little angle there. Um, so that might help when we draw out our two triangles. So draw out the two triangles first. Much better when you do that. So which one I'm going to just swap it around. I'm going to do the baby first. And then do the flat edge. I'm kind of doing like P, Q, R at the top. P, Q, R. And then this big one. And then that one is S, T, R. S, T, R. S, T, R. Cool. Um, so which, which angles do they have in common? And then bring these baby yellow ones in common. Um, and what's the reasoning behind kind of the green ones being equal? So we've got T. They only need to prove that two are equal, so I can see that many at a time. And that one is equal. T and Q are equal. According to the diagram, see you've got the parallel, parallel lines and a transversal. So what causes that? We have alternate angles. The two green angles are alternate to each other. So let's say they both have angle R in common. So both triangles have angle R in common. Um, also, angles T and Q are alternate. and close again. Save and open it again. So we're saying also angles T and Q are 
have alternate distance. What alternate angles are? A two parallel line. Vertical between them. This one's angle here. This one's that little angle there. When it came to visible angles, it seems like it's not between them. And you can let them in the end. Sure that they are alternate. Two triangles are therefore equiangular. Two triangles are therefore equiangular. Equiangular. So we've established the that that's what we've done here. Now all we have to do is we have to <laughs> we have to find it. So on my diagrams above, I probably want to mark in the length because we know. So let's see, on the baby triangle, we know that between the yellow and the green one, between Q and R, it's 9. 9 between the red one and the yellow one, so between P and R, it's 7. It's the same on our diagram. And similarly, we, what do we know? Between T and R, it's X plus 5 in the big one. Between T and R, it's X plus 5. Between S and R, it's X. So I've drawn the two triangles now in the correct orientation. So we can work it out. So, so X plus 5 corresponds with 9. And X plus 5 corresponds with 9. And X corresponds with 7. So we can do purple over purple equals red over red. Let's do that. Um, so x plus 5 over 7. No, hang on, I've done that right. No, x plus 5 over 9. Sorry, purple over purple. I'll do red over red first. Okay, x over 7 equals, so red over red equals purple over purple. x plus 5 over 9. And then we cross multiply and solve for x. going to do now. So cross multiply, 9 times x is 9x, 7 times x plus 5, that goes, let's just write it out like that to begin with, and then we expand. Just scroll down a bit, because the board gets a bit mucky down the bottom. 9x equals 7 times x is 7x, 7 times 5 is 35. Now let's subtract 7x from both sides. And that, that gives us 2x equals 35. Now let's divide both sides by 2. So x equals 35 and 2. Um, and so you could leave it like that. That's a simplified fraction. Just don't forget your units. Have a look at your diagram above. What are the units? They are meters. If you wrote it as a decimal, 35 divided by 2 is 17.5. You can put either of those there. So you know, you can circle around them. Um, and that's the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for your patience.